American forces engaged in the fight are crippled. We are very satellite dependent. GPS is very important to almost everything we do tactically, to developing a big picture, to transmitting information back and forth from our command and control circuits. You've got a nation that wants to use anti-satellite technology to knock out that capability. Just talking in the military sense, we do rely on the space-borne platforms for a lot of information. Intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, communications, missile warning, navigation, and even weather. At present, no government publicly acknowledges the development of space weapons. But in February 2008, as a test, the U.S. shot down one of its own aging spy satellites. Seen here in the actual footage, a modified anti-aircraft missile was launched from a ship. The collision was designed to destroy the satellite's fuel tank full of toxic hydrazine. Upon impact, an explosion. The gathering vapor cloud indicated the mission was successful. This test was performed in response to a similar feat by the Chinese in 2007. To defense experts, this points to a clear desire to potentially project military power into space. Well, and clear back to winning the West days, the cavalry really wanted that high hill for observation purposes. Well, for many decades now, space has been the high ground. If you are an adversary knowing that that has become such a strength, maybe a dependency, therefore maybe a vulnerability, it is very possible, it's not unreasonable, to think that an adversary might use space as a medium for denial as well. But satellites could also be disabled without destroying them. Powerful ground-based lasers could be employed, targeting the satellite's optics. Our satellites have experienced something they call dazzling. So lasers fired from the Earth into optical systems on our satellites can temporarily blind them or blind them permanently if they hit the right sensor in the uh, optical system to where you burn it out or you just flash blind it. Just then, the Americans detect a fast-moving vehicle skipping through the upper atmosphere at Mach 18, nine times faster than anything in the air today. They quickly identify the threat, a Russian-built scramjet, a hypersonic space plane capable of flying the length of the continental United States in 20 minutes. Luckily, the Americans have been working on similar technology and dispatched their own scramjet to intercept the enemy. The history of air combat has always been measure, countermeasure. As soon as somebody develops a capability, somebody else will develop the counter capability to that. Since the 1970s, space plane technology has been viewed as a possible method of hypersonic travel at speeds in excess of 3,000 miles per hour. This concept was made famous by the Rockwell X-30 in 1986, seen here in animation produced at the time. President Ronald Reagan heralded an era in which space planes would ferry passengers from New York to Tokyo in two hours. But the X-30 never made it off the drawing board. The program was canceled in 1993 due to budget cuts. The X-30's scramjet propulsion system, however, has not gone away. The Air Force is currently experimenting with the X-51 a vehicle meant to simply test the functionality of a scramjet engine or supersonic combustion ramjet. The engine itself is a simple power plant with no moving parts that harnesses the high pressure of air entering the intakes at supersonic speed. The compressed air is mixed with fuel and ignited to create very high propulsive thrust. The day may come when you can use that sort of engine to get us up into the very high reaches of the atmosphere and then perhaps into space. The big kicker is once you get into space, you have to have your own oxygen 
in order to burn something in space because there's just nothing up there to do that. The projected speed potential of scramjet-powered craft is thought to be near Mach 25, an astonishing 20,000 miles per hour, 10 times that of the fastest conventional jet aircraft in history, the SR-71. With this technology, space planes could take off from bases in the US, lift into low Earth orbit, and strike targets anywhere in the world within three hours. Performance is the name of the game. We want speed, we want the ability to reduce the time to react. The scramjet technology gives us that ability to be able to skip off the atmosphere and go around the world quickly. That's also an advantage. Both spacecraft accelerate, slipping free of Earth's atmosphere into orbit 100 miles above the surface. The American maneuvers within range of the enemy scramjet. Since conventional missiles are useless in the vacuum of space, the only armament the scramjets carry are beam weapons, high-energy lasers similar to those currently...